And we're offering a special healing service this morning. And we're praying for all the victims of the virus and their families and those connected to them. But especially this morning, we want to ask special prayers and uh, for Tish, the wife of our beloved rector, Father John Kelly. And we begin with the healing service. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God through Jesus Christ our Lord who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading today is from 1 John. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. A reading from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong. He shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. In Capernaum, Jesus went into the synagogue to pray. As soon as they... Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue. They went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I would like to think that all of my homilies center around two things. The love of our Father for us and the love that we share with each other. God's grace goes beyond anything that we can understand. We're loved because we are his children, and we should love one another because Christ lives within each and every one of us, and that is what he would want. We live in Christ, and he lives in us, and together we are the adopted and beloved children of God. In this gospel reading from Mark this morning, we, we find Jesus in the synagogue where he has preached and, and has amazed everybody. And then he leaves along with his disciples, and they're going to Simon Peter's home. I'm sure he's going there for rest and refreshment. But when they arrive, they find Simon's mother-in-law ill with a high fever. Now, Jesus heals the mother-in-law. Now, in his commentary, Barclay tells us this. This miracle tells us something about three people. It tells us something about Jesus. He did not require an audience in order to exert his power. He was very willing to create or to perform this miracle in the small cottage amongst friends. And he was never too tired to help. He, the needs of others always took precedence. This miracle tells us something about the disciples. They had not known Jesus long, but already they had begun to take all their troubles to him. And Peter's mother-in-law was ill. The, the simple home was upset. And it was for the disciples the most natural thing in the world to tell Jesus all about it. And it can be best explained in the words of a great gospel song, Take It to the Lord in Prayer. And then finally, it tells us something about Peter's wife's mother. No sooner was she healed that she began to attend to their needs. Now, Barclay quotes a great Scottish family model as such. It's saved to serve. That sounds an awful lot like our Tish, like our Father John, doesn't it? Well, Jesus helps us that we may help others. I want to finish up this morning with something that I actually found off of Facebook. Um, and it's a, a poem written by Akiti O'Mara of Madison, Wisconsin. And it was written during the Spanish flu in 1909. And it reads like this. And the people stayed at home and read books and listened and they rested and did exercises and made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened more deeply. Someone meditated, someone prayed, someone met their shadow and people began to think differently and people healed. And in the absence of the people who lived in ignorant ways, dangerous, meaningless and heartless, the earth also began to heal. And when the danger ended and people found themselves, they grieved for the dead and they made new choices and they dreamed of new visions and created new ways of living and completely healed the earth just as they were healed. Spanish flu pandemic during the year 1919. Jesus, help us that we may help others and be with those that we love. Amen. Let us join together in professing our faith as found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Praying for all who are in trouble, sickness, or need, but especially this morning for our beloved Tish, Father John and their daughter Colleen, and all John and Tish's family. We pray for all the victims and loved ones suffering from the coronavirus. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God in whom you, in whom we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole, especially Tish and John and Colleen. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken, broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light, we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessings on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessings on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, 
and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to this to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.